If you feel like you can't see interesting photos anymore, if you live in a small place that you have photographed again and again and now everything seems boring, then you need to implement some of these methods, some of these exercises that will help you focus your attention and ignite your creativity. So today we are talking about hacks that will help you spot interesting photos even in the most common places. You need to start by asking yourself this question. What is worthy shooting? The answer might be nothing at this point or it might be chaotic. In any case, the methods that we are going to discuss today, it will help you to either try to find things that are interesting or they will help you to concentrate your attention and concentrate your creativity to one or maybe a few more things. This is the alphabet method and I got this method from Alex Kilby but we are going to take it one step further here. This is a simple method, you just have to take the alphabet, take one letter of the alphabet and then go out and try to find it in your environment, whether this is streets or whether this is nature or anything else. But you don't have to find it written somewhere, no. You have to find patterns, you have to find things that resemble this letter. Now if you want to take it one step further, what you can do is you can pick one letter, let's say for example A, and try to photograph things that start from this letter. For example, you can photograph an arm or you can photograph an apple, but you have to photograph them in a creative way. And we are going to discuss how to photograph them in a creative way later in this video. To boost your creativity further, you need to combine this exercise with a few changes in your routine. If we have explored the place a lot, we know where the good spots are, where the light is best and which photo spots have the best potential and we tend to stick with them and ignore all the rest. However, this can be quite harmful to your photography and I'm going to explain why with a personal story. So every morning I cycle to work. I pass through this big highway and then I cross the river and then I cycle next to a park. Now the past week or so I decided I'm going to walk through the park instead of cycling next to it. What I found is that these early morning hours where the light is absolutely beautiful, the park becomes the best spot to photograph. I have never photographed from this point of view and yet it looks like, especially at these early hours, it is the best one to shoot from. As I mentioned, the light changes through the day and some places have better light in certain hours of the day. I used to go for my photo walks right after work around 6 in the evening, which means that I would lose all morning light or any other light for that matter. When I decided to go on a photo walk at 6 in the morning, I realized that a lot of the places that at 6 in the evening were dead, at 6 in the morning they were full of life, they had impressive light and they had great photographic potential. Another thing you could do is to invert your photo path. If you have a certain path uh, that you enjoy photographing, that has a certain direction, whether this is linear or cyclical, it doesn't matter. Instead of starting from the beginning of the path, why don't you start from the end of it and then move towards the beginning? This will make you see things from a different perspective in the inverse way and it will definitely make you observe and spot things that you have previously ignored. This is a great way actually to ignite your creativity even if you are shooting in exactly the same place as all the previous times. Now let me tell you this, how are you usually taking your photos? Are you taking your photos straight from the eye level or are you moving a bit? If you are not moving, if you are not choosing different perspectives then I would suggest you do. Pretend you are an animal. So pretend you are a dog and point your camera, put your camera really close to the ground and try to photograph from a dog's point of view. Or pretend you are a cat and you are climbing a tree and you are photographing everything, you are seeing everything and you are photographing everything 
from the top of the tree down to the ground. Well, of course, I'm not saying go and climb a tree. If you want to do it, go and do it, it doesn't matter, but I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is try to find a spot like a bridge or a tall building that you have access to and photograph from this higher vantage point down to the ground. This is a great way if you want to photograph scale. Small people, big buildings. Small people, big areas. And why don't you make it even more fun? Why don't you pretend you are a thing stuck in a wall? How would this thing see the world? Whether this is upwards or downwards or left or right, how would this thing see what is close to it, what is in its own environment? Find things that resemble known patterns. This goes back to the alphabet method, but a little bit different. Try to find things around you, try to find patterns forming that resemble well-known shapes. Like for example, the front of a house that looks like a face, or a cloud that looks like a dragon ready to eat everyone beneath it. Be aware, find examples of photographers that are able to notice details in a way that most of us would ignore. You see, this goes against our nature because our brains don't want to spend too much energy recording most of the information we see around us. So about 99% of everything around us is going unnoticed, lost in the noise. So notice the simple things around you and try to think, how can I make this look more interesting? Take as an example my phone boxes project. It's a very simple project, I'm literally just photographing the phone boxes and yet it has something very interesting to me, something very appealing. Is it the details? Is it the story? Is it the colors? What is it? For me, it's a little bit of everything. For you, you have to decide it for your own photos, for your own subjects, for your own projects. As we discussed previously, focus in the things that are closer to you, the light as it breaks through your windows, document how it changes in the day or over time. Some things might not be directly interesting now, but they might become interesting as you observe the way they are changing over time. Many times I get frustrated when I see people get fixated in photographing just the classic and the old in the streets just because it looks nice. This way we are missing the now and how people look now with their phones in their hands and their jackets and their jeans and looking messy and who knows, in 20, 30, 50 years from now this might be the classic, but we won't know if we do not document this change through our photographs. So we need to appreciate more the everyday scenes, the simple things because these are the things that will change over time. Unbind yourself from the needs of the present. Do not shoot for Instagram. Do not shoot for social media in general. Our need for acceptance make us acquire tunnel vision for what is the most popular or the most liked in social media. But an Instagram worthy shot might get you the likes. Might even be a nice shot. But is it really? your own personal voice? Is it really your own creative language? If you are outside taking photos, thinking about Instagram, you are not taking photos for yourself. Do this exercise. Get a little camera or use your phone. In whichever situation you are, take a few moments to just observe your surroundings. Try to exist in the moment and feel how it feels. Then take a photo, just one photo, of the thing that you pointed your attention mostly towards. Don't think of it, just feel it. And then move on with your day. And do this again and again and again, as many times as you can and as many times as you want through your day, your week, or your month. Then, every couple of weeks, sit down with the photos, look at them and think. Do they still make you feel the same way as they did when you first took them? If the answer is yes, then 
play with them, edit them, observe them. If the answer is no, then put them aside, but do not delete them. At some point in the future, come back and look at them. You see, both the eye and the perception are like a muscle. They can be trained to see beauty with practice and with time. Eventually, you will start seeing the photos coming to you. You will start getting good photos by instinct. You won't even have to think about them. Try to remember how you felt when you took some of your best photos. You felt excited, you felt enlightened, you felt in the zone. And this is exactly what you need to train for with the methods we discussed. You need to train your excitement, your enlightenment, your zone moments so you can make them come more often, so you can manifest them even in the most common places. So think, what do you love doing outside the photography? What are your hobbies? Figure it out and then bring your passion inside your photography. When you photograph something that you are excited about, you become more creative, you become more attentive. Your mind opens and your creativity spreads all around the place. And through that experiment, do not bind yourself to the obvious. Take an idea and try to make the most basic version of it. Next, think, how can I take this one step further? And then, let your imagination go wild. Try to think, try to envision what could be the next step in this project. For example, in my clouds and chimneys project, I started with just some clouds framed above some chimneys. And then I added colors and textures, then I added people and stories, and I did it in different cities. Try to imagine your concept. Try to think what could be each and every logical step, and then try to find it out in the streets. Make each photo be a step in a ladder and keep adding steps. But always, always, always keep your eyes open for the unexpected. Keep your eyes open for these that you won't even be able to imagine, but it can still happen out in the streets. Be uncomfortable. If you're feeling too comfortable with your photography, you're not doing new stuff. You're not experimenting. You're not growing. Think what is it that makes you feel uncomfortable and then go out and do this. For me, for example, talking to other people and trying to make them help me in my photos makes me very uncomfortable. So from time to time, not always, but from time to time, I will go, I will walk up to can people and ask them if I can take can, their can photo and can, ask can them if the they can help me with the concept. If I could summarize everything in a couple of words, that would be experiment freely. That was our video for today guys, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel with a bell and I want to see down in the comments your opinions. What are the things that you are doing that make you better in photography and help you spot photos in the most common and boring places? If you want to see me in action, you can do so in this video right here. Thank you very much for watching guys. Until next time, I will see you on the streets. Bye bye.